Wij zijn nu achter Trafalgar Studios 2, een van onze favoriete theaters in de West End in Londen. Kleiner dan M-Lab, maar groter dan het Paroltheater. Vorig jaar zagen we het briljante Wolfboy, geproduceerd door Christopher Clegg. Begin dit jaar Ordinary Days. Deze zomer Betwixt, a funny musical. Geproduceerd ook door Christopher Clegg, de man achter Musical Magazine en... Benedict, on the eve of your first uh, preview. Yes, that's right. Uh, just getting all the last minute things ready. So yeah, very exciting. Nervous, but exciting. We can hear the set department uh, drilling and sawing. Drilling, sawing, painting, stressing generally. You're Bailey in Betwixt. I am, yes. um, Who is Bailey? Bailey is um, a very endearing, enthusiastic uh, author. Um, he's, a, he's a writer who had a, a a hit novel when he was younger and um, everybody absolutely loved it and they've been waiting for years for him to write this second book and he hasn't produced anything yet and it's getting closer and closer to his deadline and he still hasn't got a book because he's got writer's block. Stephen. Hi. Hi. Uh, Betwixt. Yes. You play the part of Cooper. Yes. Who is he? Who is he? Good question. Um, Cooper is um, the flatmate of Bailey, who um, it centres around, um, who is um, a New York writer uh, who's suffering from writer's block, and I play his flatmate. Well, I turn up and claim to be his new flatmate, but he has no idea about it. Oh! Basically, and then um, the two of us... Um, a door arrives. Um, a door arrives at door your apartment. At, at the apartment, and uh, we go through it. He he ends up uh, going with his new roommate Cooper into um, through a door into a magical kingdom where all sorts of strange things happen to him, uh, and he has this adventure. People are swapped over. There's um, a daytime TV um, star in the real world who swapped with the prince in the in the uh, betwixt world, and it's it's and hilarity ensues. There are singing German disembodied heads. There's, you know, this mad princess who's pregnant and is going to get exiled unless she gets married and her husband gets swapped out for his real-life counterpart world who's this washed-up soap opera actor and he's running around the jungle and there's sex-crazy nymphomaniacs and there's this gay flamboyant roommate and there's this writer with writer's block. So it's all these things. It's very farcical. It's very layered and, you know, if you don't laugh at one thing, you're going to laugh at another. The subtitle is A Funny Musical. Yeah, well, I genuinely think it is a funny musical, um, partly because it's very modern as well. I mean, sometimes people think of musical theatre as sort of uh, set in the past and it's all about old jokes and old routines, but actually, this is a very modern funny musical and, and hopefully will appeal to young people too. The subtitle, that frightened me a little bit, a Did funny it? musical. Yeah. It's, uh, it's laugh or I'll shoot, uh, yes. almost. Yeah, you've got to... <laughs> You've got to laugh. <laughs> the thing I is, it's, yeah, it's so over the top and ridiculous. The script is is very clever. It's written in a very fast sitcom style. Um, I mean, it is at the beginning of the musical. Before they go into this enchanted world, it's based in New York in this apartment, and you see that the, the writing style is a, um, not just kind of you know performing to the audience, saying, oh, you know, here's a joke. It, it's written it's it's so embedded the comic timing is so embedded within the writing itself it's my kind of comedy it's sort of it's zany and silly but then there's really some really serious moments in the play and i just love that mix mm -hmm. of nothing's nothing's too ridiculous and nothing's too dramatic it's a perfect blend so there's so much going on you you can't come you can't come and see betwixt and think oh it's going to be like this mm -hmm. it's going to be like nothing anyone's ever seen it's just it's such a kind of patchwork quilt of different things. What kind of music will we hear? Wow, there's so many different styles. There's um there's old school Broadway, there's a ragtime song, there's swing, there's a tango, there's beautiful ballads, almost Andrew Lloyd Webber like type numbers, <laughs> Mexican, it's everything, it's absolutely everything. Critics can say it has such diverse styles. It doesn't know what direction it has to go to. Uh -huh. But I think the the story um, is is so well woven into the songs as well. That's what really brings it out. And it's it's it's. I think the one thing, the one theme that comes through is is the magic. And the magic 
is so central to the story, it makes it believable that all these different things can happen and all of the music can be pulled from all these different places to make this into this nice quilt <laughs> of music. This is your debut, your theatre debut or your musical debut? Uh, well, it's my kind of West End debut. I've done a lot of, I did a lot of theatre and musicals um, when I was at university, um, but this is my, my first time in London doing something um, so it's it's my first theatre and my first musical what is your connection to musical have you um, well, I, done musical before well I started when I was 10 and I did Oliver and Scrooge and various mm -hmm. musicals but then I didn't do another one until last year I did um, I've been doing mainly straight plays in the theatre and um, last year I did a musical called Departure Lounge and it sort of reawoke woke my, um, my love for musicals but especially new work is acting in London so huge that it is again a debut uh, I guess so, yeah, in, 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 in a way. There's, um, you know, I'm no longer just surrounded by, you know, my peers and by, you know, family and friends and things. This is, you know, a, also, lot, a lot different. <laughs> so you're alone in the big city. That's right, that's right, yes. <laughs> did you choose Betwixt or did Betwixt choose you? Wow, well, that's quite a profound question. <laughs> I think we chose each other. We were drawn to each other. That's a profound answer. Yeah. <laughs> this all is situated in a 98-seat theatre. It is, it is, in Trafalgar 2. Um, it's very intimate, so <laughs> the audience will be as close as you and I are now. This is my third show in Trafalgar 2, and I absolutely love the fact that only a certain amount of people can see it per night, and it's just you and them, and you can almost give everyone a bit, a bit of time separately. Everyone gets... It's, like, it's almost like a one-on-one. -on -one when you're in there yes, yes. And, um, and you know you can smell them and they can smell you and you can feel each other I love seeing things in a smaller space you know because you really you know you see all the, the roller coaster of what the actors are going through you can see the fear in their eyes on the first night as well <laughs> <laughs> yes I can see your fear in your eyes but you can see our fear as that's well. true <laughs> will he land on me or something <laughs> yeah. aren't we too close to you no, well, I think it depends on the show. With this, especially, definitely not, because we bring you into the world as well. I mean, you know, it's not just a stage and then you. You're, you know, the, the lighting incorporates, the, the, the certain glow of the lighting incorporates the audience and the, the set goes all around it, so it's just one entire world. Is a producer able to make good business in a 98-seat theatre like Trafalgar Studios 2? Um, sometimes yes and sometimes no. I think if you're clever, you, you can do good things in there for not a lot of money and still make a little bit of profit. You know, obviously there's only 98 seats, so you can't make thousands and thousands no, and no. thousands, but you can come out alive and you can, you know, everyone can get paid and you can all earn a little bit of money, hopefully. You as an actor hitting London, you would like to be in the, in the, the Apollo Victoria with 1,500 people I'd watching. Love to do, I'd love to do anything like that, absolutely. Um, you know, but um, this is a really nice place to start. What is your goal in producing musicals? Profit? Um, not at this stage. Eventually, yeah, but at the moment it's to get good shows that I believe in mm -hmm. um, onto the stage and let them develop and grow and, you know, get the audience to come to them kind of because they trust the productions, they trust the, the writers, the directors, you know. We need to get out of kind of the celebrity casting <laughs> kind of phase. You know, uh -huh. I don't want anybody from a soap opera, anything like that. So, yeah, th the goal is to start them small, to develop them, and then hopefully the, the audience and the reviews will, will praise it and will take it on from there. Comparing Betwixt to Wolf Boy, they're both <laughs> a bit fringy, a bit, bit indie. Yeah. Is that your taste? It is. I, I prefer to be creative than just throw lots of money at things. <laughs> you know, as in, you know, you get the best out of people when you have to think more about it. If we had a £10 million pound budget, we could just do whatever we want and it would be no fun and, you know, it would just look like there's lots of money on stage. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it's smaller, I think you can really play with it more and you have to be more inventive and come up with more ideas and that, that side of things I enjoy. But, but still, do you think this is a preparation for you as a mega producer and, and, and staging productions at the Palace Theatre? That would be nice. That would be nice? Yes. Um, I guess you just see how it goes. But aren't you afraid that you won't be able to be fringy anymore? No, I think you can be clever about it if you do big productions. Last question, what would you like us to take with us uh, from the musical? Um, just a, th a thoroughly enjoyable evening, basically. It's mostly, mostly laughs, but then 
it's, it's not not that it's sad, but there's, there's a real message in it that comes from the heart. What I'd love is if people go away from the theatre thinking about the message at the end, about um, because Bailey goes on this journey through the musical. It starts off in this very kind of sheepish, awkward place and really blossoms himself into the character. It's about um, looking inside yourself and becoming the person that you, you're meant to be, but you just maybe haven't found the way to access that person yet. I like to think that people can go away seeing that journey that he's made and thinking, you know, anything's possible. That's the real message in the musical.